Patients often struggle with sleep fragmentation or insomnia, and these terms are often used interchangeably. So if we think about sleep fragmentation, we can think about, well, I'd like to go to bed, and I'd like to just get a good night's sleep and then wake up the next day. Well, first things first, how much is normal sleep? So we know as we get older, the amount of normal sleep that patients have seems to be reduced. Now, that doesn't mean to say that actually you couldn't use more sleep, but the way that the brain is, it seems as we get older that people do not get much more in the way of sleep. In fact, they seem to get less time. So for somebody in their 70s to be getting six hours or even five hours sleep at night is often very good, especially uh, in the face of other challenges. What are those other challenges? Well, obviously we have challenges such as the bladder. And so as we get older, even without disease, the bladder can get more challenging and you may end up needing to go to the bathroom more frequently to empty the bladder, what we call nocturia. The truth is though that in diseases of the brain, especially things like Parkinson's disease and dementia with Lewy bodies, we actually see that the bladder and the innovation to the bladder, that is the way that the nerves are regulating the bladder, are impacted. So in actual fact there is more of this nocturia, more sleep fragmentation caused by that. Other symptoms that, if you like, can impact on sleep would be things like physical discomfort. So with Parkinson's or Lewy body dementia where there's Parkinsonism, there's this stiffness, a discomfort in the body that may be improved by things like massage, it might be improved by some um, Parkinson type medications or even the, the nighttime sedatives that can relax muscles. In terms of other symptoms that can impact upon the overnight sleep quality, there are things like sleep apnea, um, and you know, overnight breathing machines can help with that and restless leg syndrome which I'll do another clip on somewhere else on this website for you to look at where effectively we might be able to treat a symptom that is fragmenting sleep. In terms of sleep patterns and fragmentation I, I think about insomnia, the inability to stay asleep or get to, to sleep as in if you like three stages. Early, i.e. I can't get to sleep at night, mid, I get to sleep and then I wake up and I can't get back to sleep and late. I sleep through but maybe a few hours before I want to wake up I seem to be awake and I can't get back to sleep. If we take those in turn I can talk you through some of my clinical experience. So with early insomnia, it's often related to things like anxiety, where the mind is racing and people can't relax and get their brain to sleep, or discomfort, uh, where people aren't able to settle down and fall asleep. Mid-insomnia often is related to things like nocturia, where the bladder wakes you up and you can't get back to sleep, or um, sleep apnea, where you might be aroused by the fact that you can't breathe properly overnight and then your heart rate comes up, your adrenaline levels go up and you just can't settle back to sleep. And then late insomnia is a feature that the psychiatrist often recognises early morning wakening, something that's often associated with depression. So patients who have this, if you like, waking up, I'd like to wake up at 7 in the morning, I always seem to wake up at 5 in the morning, I can't get back to sleep. One does like to probe for things like mood disorder and depression. So we do have lots of patterns of sleep fragmentation that then begs the question, what do we do to treat them? Well, we've talked about some of those things that impact upon sleep that we have different treatments for, the bladder and the sleep apnea. But specifically, do we have any good treatments to help sleep overnight? Well, that's something you have to take into consideration with what other symptoms might be at play. So for example, if a problem relates predominantly to things like anxiety, then obviously treating someone with a, with a drug that would relieve the anxiety can help and often they have some sedative qualities that can help put a patient to sleep in the first place. We also um, looked at other uh, aspects of depression with late uh, insomnia and again uh, uh, treating the mood can be important. So if we look past those, if you like, confounding symptoms, what about treating sleep itself? Well, unfortunately, lots of people have looked to see whether there are drug treatments that would improve um, overnight sleep across all of the brain diseases. And unfortunately, we don't seem to have a great uh, response to medications. So the, the sleeping tablets that are often used are generally not effective and also can carry significant side effects in patients who have brain diseases. So I think there's really a limited use for those drugs in these patients and if it is used, it can be used in short term. 
But I think the focus has to be on trying to, if you like, exclude all the other confounding factors and also trying to make sure that the daytime is as good as it can be. And that means really making sure you're taking exercise and not sleeping your day away because, of course, then you won't have the sleep debt that you need to get good rest overnight.